All right. So I wanted to make a follow-up video um, from the previous one and talk about why I took a break, almost a six-month-long break from social media, and what I have learned since taking that break. Eating yogurt. It's a really good brand of Greek yogurt here in Ecuador. It's grass-fed milk. Cow. It's grass-fed cow that produces the milk for this specific yogurt. And I did not find an adapter, the lightning cable adapter, to connect my microphone for my phone anywhere here on the coast of Ecuador. So I'm using my computer this time to make a video while I hang here in this pretty rad hammock. Okay. The craziest thing happened. I made a Facebook post. And I didn't really make an announcement that, hey, I'm back after six months of being silent and MIA. I just kind of made a post of just like some random words that I wrote this morning. And I posted this photo. And the photo was of my friend Max. Um, and I administered combo on him. I did eight gates on his arm. And the way that I took the photo, you can't really see that it's not me. But if you look close enough, you'll see that the person in the photo has a beard kind of hanging from the corner. So I posted this photo, and I posted this on my Facebook wall. And some people got confused, you know, they're like, is this you? And one person was so fanatic about it. Um, she just went on and on and on commenting on different comments on the post and saying some crazy things like this is not you or this is not her you're a he you're somewhere between 18 and 25 years I don't believe you like she spent a solid fucking hour or two just making comments on other people's comments trying to tell them that I'm not who I am and I was like I assure you it's me Obviously, it's not me in the photo. I took the photo of my friend. But I did the writing. And I took the photo, so I'm the taker of the photo. And she went psychotic, okay? Like, I'm going to post some of these screenshots here. And you will see what she's been saying. And... I wrote her a message on my Facebook Messenger, through my Facebook Messenger. And I was like, yo, sis, what's up? <laughs> you okay? <laughs> she went through the trouble of posting on my wall, tagging me, and posting a missing report, like what you do if somebody goes missing in Peru. Because I guess she still, still thinks I'm in Peru. I don't know. And she went through the trouble of doing that. She messaged people on my, like, from the people that commented, telling them it's not me, that, I, that my account got hacked. Crazy shit, okay? And I'm just over here laughing because I didn't realize that I am this famous. <laughs> Where people think that I'm not me because she mentioned in her comments she's like I know the real Lana wouldn't say things like what you're saying I'm baffled I had no clue okay and here's what I learned well 
let me first tell you why I took a break. I took a break because my mental capacity was running on low. And my dopamine was non-existent. And I realized I just couldn't continue life scrolling anymore. You know, it was consuming me. And like I mentioned in the previous video, there's always these thoughts that come up where they say, you should be further ahead than you are, Lana. You're not as far enough ahead as you, you're supposed to be at 32. And I realized that those are not my thoughts. You know, this is what I learned uh, during this break. Because those thoughts fell away when I stopped looking at what other people are doing and not doing and stopped giving two fucks about keeping people updated with what I'm doing or not doing. Because I also realized that people also look at my feed and think that they should be doing something that they're not doing. Maybe something that I'm doing. And it's just this really unhealthy loop of emotions that we that go on in our head. Yes, I'm eating the whole tub because it's that good. And on a side note, I am more of an animal-based eater now. Um, I only eat meat and yogurt and kefir now and butter. The yogurt and the kefir have really helped strengthen my nails. Like my nails look so good. I know you can't really see here. They look so good and shiny and just healthy. And they're so hard and thick. They've, they've always been so brittle. So I realized my body needed calcium. And um, when I completed three weeks in the jungle and I left, my body was like, I just want yogurt and kefir and cheese. I ate cheese, but I cut that out almost immediately. Um, just because it's not what my body wanted. I've become really good at listening to my body. I'm really proud of myself. Anyways, that's a side note. We're just going to... So that's also something that I learned to do when I had all this extra time. Because I wasn't scrolling and all this other stuff. Is I learned to listen to my body. And I listened to what my body wanted and what my body needed. And how to take care of my body by knowing how to listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I also learned that I have a lot of time on my hands. So I read instead. I did not do as much yoga as I should have. But my body was hurting. So I was focused on just healing my body. Being more present. I meditated. I did a lot of medicine, a lot. I think, I think I'm done, <laughs> honestly. But I know I have said that before, and I came right back a week later. But this time, this time I have to leave South America for at least six months because I can't come back to Ecuador for six months. And I've already explained this in the previous video. I'll link it up. And... So I'm forced to go travel and visit my family. I want to, not I'm forced. And I have an option of taking ayahuasca with me because I have a whole liter of it. But I kind of don't feel like I want to. I really feel like maybe a, a six-month-long break is going to be do, do me good. It's going to do me good. I think so. Hoping. Counting on it. What else did I learn? Mm, I learned that the people who really care about you, they will reach out to you. If you're not posting anything on social media where they can get like a quick update on your life, they will reach out to you. And a lot of people reached out to me, and I'm really grateful for all you guys. Like, man, I felt really loved when I came back and I saw the messages of people like, You okay? Hey, you okay? I haven't heard from you in a minute. <laughs> Those were really sweet. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I learned that other people will completely forget you. And that's okay, too. 
that's totally okay. And I learned how to be invisible for a moment, you know? I learned that it's okay if people forget about me. And that felt really good. That felt so liberating to be like, it's okay if everyone forgets about me. Even my own mother. Like, that's okay. <laughs> I will continue living. You know? Where else, what else am I going to do? <laughs> I will continue living. And I'd say I gained a lot of strength and courage. And I found a deeper inner strength. You know? Because I've always known I had strength inside me. Right? We all do. We all, we're all strong in our own way. But strength is also layered. It's multidimensional. There's many different layers to strength. The same way as there's many different layers to fear. Okay? Fear is also multidimensional. You don't know fear until you have come across a certain thing that scares the shit out of you. Okay? And like my mother... I used to think I was fearless until I experienced something that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and then I realized another fear unlocked. And go through the fear and you find yourself on the other side. This yogurt is really good. Really good. I can just feel all the probiotics in my tummy all happily laughing. I mean... Mm. And another thing I learned, taking this break from social media, is that sometimes silence is better than talking. And not just sometimes, but silence is always better than talking. You know? Always. Whether you have something to say or you don't. Because no one's going to know you're stupid until you say something. You know what I mean? In fact... The quiet people are oftentimes seen as the most wise in the room, right? It's just a matter of, like, holding your compo composure and remaining confident so that people know you're not a dumbass. You just don't want to speak. That's the trick. <laughs> so people think I'm a lot smarter than I really am. <laughs> Gotcha! <laughs> but that is something that ayahuasca actually taught me. Also, what did I do on this break? Is, like I said, I was traveling through Ecuador, and I had some friends visiting. I had two, two friends, one from the States and one from Peru, come to visit me. So we traveled a little bit around Ecuador together. One, one came for three weeks, and another one came for two weeks. So I entertained... And, um, the other time when I wasn't entertaining, I was drinking medicine and doing combo and having massages done. I was reading, meditating, you know, journaling, the rest. And lately, ever since I came to Ecuador and I was drinking the medicine here, um, I was receiving some... I hate to call them downloads because that's such a new age thing. I was receiving more realizations of... Hold on. I was receiving more realizations of how I should be, right? And who I should be. Because who am I really? And the medicine kept telling me that I should be quieter. I shouldn't make so much sound. Be more invisible, you know, because, and, and move slower, move slower, because the world will tell you, don't be afraid to take up space, right, and there's this whole popular movement of take up space, take up space, allow yourself to take up the space, all the space you need, and ayahuasca showed me, no, Lana, Create space. Create space everywhere you go. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, totally. Create space everywhere I go. And it's about holding space for people, but it's also about 
not um not influencing them with my energy right and so i'm loud banging doors stomping while walking you know and i'm doing all all sorts of movement i'm attracting a certain type of attention right because people will look and be like geez or people will just simply look up from reading a book right if if I slammed a door or I placed a cup too loud on the table people will look up and glance at you that's not the attention I want right I want to create space for people so I want to come in as quietly as possible to create that space for this person, to enjoy their personal space and not get distracted by what I'm doing, you know? That was a very um, deep lesson that I probably don't even have the full vocabulary of words to express it properly the way that it was shown to me. Um, But that was the one that came to mind because I think that that's the one that is really going to be evolving inside of me for the next coming year or longer you know it was almost like this is your homework (laughs) and once I received that then the last four or five ceremonies that I had here were so easy they were like nothing you know I had the visuals and everything you know the fractals and Um, I was flying in different dimensions, but my mind and no, no realizations, like no new information was coming. It was just silent. It was just so silent and peaceful in a really pleasant way. And I've never experienced that before. Okay. In the last five years, I've never experienced that before. So this was really um, a new experience for me. And I feel like that helped set the next step for my journey as I go and socialize, you know, with the world. I'm just really excited to be back with people who have no idea what psychedelics even are, honestly. Um, Spiritual world can be very ick, if you know what I mean, you know? Um, not the spiritual world, but the spiritual community can be very ick. And I'll just leave it at that. So once you experience the ick, you kind of don't want to be a part of that said group. And I guess that's where I'm at currently. You know, I'm just wanting to... Um, be around people who don't know anything about spirituality or medicine or any of this (laughs) woo-woo stuff, you know? Um, Yeah. And have just normal conversations about, like, the coffee's too hot or that chair is ugly, (laughs) You know, just normal conversations, normal everyday conversations. That's what I want more in life. And I want to laugh more, you know. I had a Wachuma ceremony when I went back to Peru two months ago to grab all my things and relocate here. And during this Wachuma ceremony, um, it was so funny. I just looked at the ground and I was like, anywhere that I will be, I will be at home. Because this planet is my home. You know, doesn't matter where I will be, I will always be at home. And it doesn't matter where I will be, because anywhere that I will be, that is exactly where God the Creator wants to have an experience through my physical form. And wherever it is that I will be, I will be in the right place at the right time. You know, it was funny. I guess it's not so funny when I say it on camera. And the other really cool little piece of information, I guess, that came through that ceremony was that water has no sound, but we all know what it sounds like. 
And if you already heard me saying this, um, and you're just annoyed because I say I say this little bit of information to everybody I come across because I just think it's so funny and I think it's so awesome and I will continue telling everybody about it because it's it's quite hilarious in my opinion. Um, I can't quite explain why it's so funny, but if you really think about it, we all do know what water sounds like, right? Whether it's like ice crackling in your cup when you pour in water or whether it's ice cracking underneath your feet when you're standing on a frozen lake or if it's ice falling in your fridge or if it's the faucet running or if it's water boiling or if it's water coming from your shower or if it's a bathtub getting full or it's the ocean, or it's the river, or it's a water fountain, or it's raining. There's so many different sounds to water. That's mind-blowing, is it not? That's why I think it's so funny, because it's by itself, water has no sound. But we all know the sounds of water. And that was just a, an example for me on how to be a better person you know, is to just be, but not like attach myself to things, you know, so people will know me for just who I am, rather for the things that I do. Um, so basically, I can't quite bridge the two concepts together, because it's a little complicated with how I'm seeing it. Um, so I'm gonna try. Basically, not be known for the things that I do, but be known for, for who I am, right? Um, there's no other way to say this. <laughs> That's just going to have to cut it. So, yeah. It's been a good break. I learned a lot. And I'm really happy to come back. And the other thing that I did on this break was I did a Chirik Sanango dieta by myself. This was my very first dieta that I did by myself, for myself, and I opened the dieta for myself. No, I'm not a shaman. No, I will not do a dieta for you because no. And no, I'm not a curandero. Um, I just trust my body and I trust the guidance of God. Um, and I, I, I know my body at this point. And I decided that it was right for me to do it. Uh, Chirik Sanango is a very powerful master plan. And if, you, if it's not done right, it can fuck you up, as they say. Um, I am doing the, the keto diet. Well, I was. Now I'm eating yogurt. Not the keto diet, but in ketosis. So I was doing the carnivore diet where I was only eating meat. And I was in serious ketosis. But I was only eating meat during this dieta. First I was eating boiled chicken and then I was eating um, steamed beef. And yeah, yeah, I know. A lot of people will disagree with me on that and they will, you know, they, they have. A lot of people have advised me not to do that because it will fuck me up deep, so deeply. Because when you're opening up such a space in dieta... The, the work that you're doing, it's on such a micro-dimensional level that if you fuck something up way down, down there, you know, it's really difficult to come, come back out of that and find your way back to normal. And a lot of people advise me, don't do it. Like, don't do it. There's a reason why, you know, all of these um, shamans will tell you that you need to eat a plant-based diet with no salt, no oil, no sugar, obviously. You shouldn't be having sugar anyways. And no caffeine, you know, no, none of that. But basically, you can have, like, steamed vegetables. You can have, you can have fish, but it has to be a specific kind of fish with no teeth. And it has to be a river fish. And you can't have... Um, oh, you can have eggs, um, but also in moderation, right? And the only thing you can drink is basically water. And you can, you can have, like, light teas, like val 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 valerian? valerian root. I wanted to say the Russian word, valerianka. Um, so, I was like, yeah. And I really felt the calling to sit with Chirik Sanango for over a year now. 
Uh, I just never had the opportunity to do so. And I finally have this spot. So I decided it was time. It was time to do this dieta by myself, for myself, and I know what I'm doing. I got this. Even though I did not know what I was doing, <laughs> I was like, all right, I trust you. I know you got my back. I know you're always guiding me. <laughs> and without any doubt, I knew I could trust God, and it was perfect. I did the dieta on only meat with no eggs. I stopped eating eggs. And I got to say... I got everything I needed out of this dieta because after I closed dieta two days ago, today is the 17th of September, whenever I post this on YouTube, whatever. And I'm going to finish up because I don't want this to get too long. So this plant gave me everything I needed. So for the duration of my dieta, I was basically just like freaking rotting in my bed because you know, A, I had very low energy, it was the, this plant makes you feel very disor disoriented, and drowsy, and drunk-like, and imbalanced, you can't really keep your physical balance, so it's, and your body feels like it's got a billion different little, um, cold needles poking you everywhere in your body, okay, so it's, it's interesting, so it's a very weird, feeling, physical feeling. And when I close my day after the next morning, I wake up and I am so fired up. I'm so ready to go. I was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, where has this been? I have been missing these qualities that I used to have back in the day that I kind of gave, gave up on them. I don't know. They just kind of dissipated from wherever I was. And now I'm finally getting them back where I'm becoming a lot more social and I'm finding the mental capacity again to respond to people's messages and to hold conversations, to hold uncomfortable conversations. You know, there's lots of, there have been lots of uncomfortable conversations that people disagreed with what I was saying online, you know, and people felt the need to, to debate me. I'm not very good at debating. I don't want to prove my point to you. I don't feel the need to. It's not my job. It's not what I'm here for. So now I'm sensing this new strength and new power within me. Yeah. And that, I think that's a good place to end this. Anyways, thanks for being here. Thank you for listening. That's it. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.